All right, it's uh, 20 after the hour, so let's begin. Uh, this is the Northern Broadcasting Service brought to you by the Ministry of Communications. This is our February broadcast to go along with issue 20 of the Northern Light. Uh, I am Darkanian, and I'm joined by Brenda. Hello, hello there. Uh, for our first topic, we'll be discussing uh, the ministry so far and how well the ministers and the executive staff has been doing. Um, uh, so, would you like to start? I'll start off with my own ministries. Uh, so, home affairs. It's been pretty standard so far, doing mentoring lists and recruitment lists. A bit slow up on the members, but eventually I'll get there. There's a few secret projects on hand that hopefully will help um, integrate the game side and forum side. Secret projects? Any spoilers? Um, maybe it's something to do with um, using the game side advocates to do something. Ah, uh, yes, because you run the game side advocates. Might help improve relations between some groups of people in TMP. Well, I'll have to warn you: the sloths and dragons will never get along. Um. Uh, I mean, home affairs have been pretty uh, standard, standard so far. I would agree. Uh, I look forward to seeing what those uh, secret black projects will be. Uh, but uh, I guess uh, let's look at WA Affair World Assembly Affairs next. Uh, I mean, they've they've they have probably the most active channel in the executive server. Uh, like uh, we're caught constantly talking about current world, uh, world assembly proposals mostly talking about how all the submitted ones are awful because most of the submitted uh, world assembly proposals are awful but, uh, voting threads have been going up uh, in a timely manner ifvs have been going out in a timely manner uh, Deropia has been starting the uh, sponsorship program for world assembly authors uh, so Looking forward to what uh, World Assembly Affairs will do with all this free time they have on their hands uh, after going through and uh, dissing all the awful proposals. I do agree, yeah. WA Affairs has the most um, most active chat in the executive server and it should be fun seeing what they can keep going to do as there are always plenty of WA proposals on hand. Maybe we'll move on to communication. Oh, just, you know, as as we are sponsored by the Ministry of Communications, we, we of course, have nothing but glowing praise for, for how it's going so far. Uh, but naturally, the most recent issue of the Northern Lights, uh, that was, that was a very successful one. Like, I actually got compliments from the regions that I released uh, the paper to, and in the regions that I'm ambassador to, they had nothing but praise for uh, nothing but praise for our for the newspaper. And unfortunately, and, I haven't received such praise from my regions yet, but I'll see how they respond. Yeah, usually the forum threads will be pretty inactive, but I actually got call out in their discord discord server and the social liberal union uh and they mentioned like they mentioned like we don't use our forums for much but we but we all looked on the forums to see these this great uh this great newspaper you released because holy crap it's amazing uh and of, and then of course there's a North, northern broadcasting service uh I mean, it's been going pretty regularly. Uh, I, I'd like to have like more people joining, but luckily, uh, Keish has, uh, I hope you don't mind if I give out a bit of spoilers, but we're going to be recruiting for the Northern Broadcasting Service soon. So please feel free to message Keish if you're interested. Yes, I hope it will be more regular and the more variety of people on the Northern Broadcasting Service instead of just us two. 
I can't carry every broadcast. Like, I think I checked the previous broadcasts, and I'm the only person who's been in every single one of them so far. Oh, no. I've been in most of them, I believe. Uh, let's see. Uh, defense. Wow. Yeah, defense have been going very actively. Like, they've they've continued their active uh, detagging, uh, just keeping them in, keeping the uh, the army active and active and going. And uh, the officers have been leading those practicing their uh, tag. And we've even had a few join ops with uh, like allies and friends uh, in other militaries. Seen the chat pretty active. Hope they continue the activity. I mean, I have no doubt they will. The North Pacific Army has a lot of very, a lot of homegrown talent, and really, I just, I just love it. It's great. You should definitely join if you're not in it. We have a bunch of friendly people, and we're all, we're, they're all very happy to help you get started, and eventually, beyond that, into officerships and all that. So, maybe moving on to culture. Culture currently under uh, Yukira. Yes, indeed. Um, I mean they've mainly been running the Leonard so far, and uh, there's also been uh, the recent, like Saint George and uh, McMacedonia have been working on uh, the North Pacific University, and I actually saw uh, Saint George actually posted in the North Pacific University about. Uh, gay rights and like a bunch of gay conversion therapy and gay hi and gay history for uh lgbt history month i should i should actually say lgbt i'm sorry about that uh so if you if you haven't seen that you definitely should it's under the north pacific university which is the second listed forum i believe yeah and then under history so if you haven't given that a read you definitely should uh Beyond that, there was Beyond the... that. What was that? Beyond that, the actual ministry. should not say that, but... Other departments in there, I think they're doing well, except they just don't have enough, like, staff um, yeah, doing the job. Definitely need some more staff for this, for each department, but... I mean, the Lenners have been active as always. Uh, there have been discussions for improving the Lenners, I saw. Uh, but they've been going pretty actively. They've uh, had a bunch of nominations and polls going. Uh, I think there's actually one going on right now. Been a newcomer of the year, and I believe the Ocean Empire is leading it by substantial votes. So do vote before someone... Uh, Lotion's Definitely. actually in this voice chat right now, so congrats. So, uh, good job on your win so far. We'll see if that changes. Uh, then there's uh, role play events and promotion. Uh, I'm personally not in that, so I'm not sure how well I like. I'm not personally in that, I know, and I'm already in role play, so I'm not sure how that's going exactly. I believe the Eris magazine starting back up or something. Um, I mean, I hope Some it is. Magazine. I mean, that I'd love to see the Eris magazine get going. And uh, you know, again, I'm not I'm not in their chat, but I'm pretty. But I wouldn't surprise me if that's a topic that they're discussing and hoping to bring about. It's been way too long for that. It's been proposed, just been waited on, but finally, I hope it's happening. It'll be Wasn't it proposed way back under Cerixia's term? Ah, uh, yes. It was a long time ago. Eventually, Hopefully. eventually we'll get it going. Eventually, one day. Uh, not not being enough content. Okay, you you heard you hate you heard Saint George guys. Everyone start role playing just like crazy on the forums. Just. Plot an assassination of your rival rival nation's leader. Just do it. Don't don't hold back. Whatever you want, just roll. 
I mean, it could probably also be like combined with, I think the R&B reel is currently in uh, the Northern Lights. I'm pretty sure, I don't know, maybe that could be combined into uh, the Eris magazine and, and just be a general role play magazine. Uh, yeah, I would, I would like that because there's some major events going in the um, R&B RP scene currently. There, there's always major events going on. I mean, major, major events. Because you will never really get someone starting a bunch of wars. To be fair, we get that on the forums sometimes do, too. We call that Ruvinland. Um, but apart from the wars, we've actually got none. Of Finally, phone affairs. Pretty good, I would say. Yeah, uh, there's recently been starting a mentoring program where uh, Pileth is working to get experienced ambassadors and diplomats to uh, basically accompany uh, less experienced diplomats to uh, their regions. And the less experienced diplomats would be the official ambassador, but the mentor would help them know what to do and answer any questions they have, all that stuff. And... You know, there's been a bunch of mentoring programs so far, but I actually like how this one's going so far. I haven't I like been the, I like the individualized that mentoring that's going on. Yeah, I do like this program. It's the first program I've seen, but I do like it a lot. I remember, uh, I believe Bootsy did, uh, back in his term as Minister of Foreign Affairs, he had diplomatic teams. And... You know those those were good, but I but like that would like be too more, big. Yeah, yeah I like yeah. the more individualized approach that Palace is going for on this one. Uh, just before Guy's term, uh, Saint George, that's when Bootsy was Minister of Foreign Affairs. It wasn't a very long term; he had to resign. Uh, then I feel like there's another thing. Oh yeah, it got revived to two person teams. Um, like revised two-person teams after a while, but that was just like, eh. yeah. But we've been got, getting a lot of uh, questions and all that, like from new diplomats who are very interested in representing their region, and I'm liking the engagement from both the new new diplomats and the old old guard of diplomats. I'm liking I'm liking both of them. So I'm so I'm very hopeful that this will be a successful mentorship program for foreign affairs and so far it has been but we'll see we'll see how long it goes i move on to the next topic let's and just we discuss. Kind of touched up on that already when we discussed culture i do like the i do like the revival of it it's something i haven't seen before as a new person to tmp from a year ago um, but it's an interesting type of reward to everyone who's currently here and everyone who who has come who hasn't seen this. Uh, um, the real thing I'd like to see from the Leonards right now is more engagement with the nominations process because like this most recent Leonard, I think, has had four nominees. And, you know, there's only so many newcomers you can get that, are, that have made enough of a name for themselves to be nominated. But it's, it's the same time, I'm pretty sure we could have gotten a lot more nominees. The nominations process do, does need to be somewhat, um, not upgraded, but like more integrated. More integrated, Just... more on the public mind, more... Uh, streamlined, I guess. But, uh, you know, I look forward to seeing what the Lennox could could be. They're already good, but, like, I'd prefer... I I could see definitely ways it could be improved, I guess. Hopefully that will be sometime when we have the next Lennox. Hopefully next year, I would say. But maybe a year after. Uh, next topic, uh, the effectiveness of the vice delegate and the speaker. 
for processing citizenship applications. Um, uh, you can talk well, about that I since cover, you're the speaker. As I cover two of the checks, uh, admin and speaker, I feel like I should let Brendog cover this first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm totally not biased on this, not at all. Totally know how to check everyone, so I only let Doug and you cover. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, this is like, again, this is just record time for like that. We've never had citizenships processed so quickly. Uh, like for so often there's always been like, cause there's three different parties that have to do their checks. So, uh, so all the time there's always the, there's always some party that really grinds down an activity and really bogs down the uh, citizenship checks. Like sometimes it's the administration team because they don't have enough active members uh, who are able to devote the time to performing those ad admin checks. Uh, because, you know, you often have to make judgment calls and sometimes you have to do more research into certain uh, checks because it's, it's not always black and white. So sometimes you have to like research or double check stuff and then so oftentimes people just if before abby and i came on well before abby came on there it was actually a bit of a crisis because it was so there wasn't there weren't enough administrators who had enough time to devote to doing that daily task day in and day out so it really bogged down the process and then before i was speaker there was a, a under owen stacy's term that during that time, it was actually the speaker's office that had bogged down and had grounded down an activity, and then that was what was slowing down uh, citizenship processes. <laughs> uh, thanks, Georgie. I'm I'm so glad I'm central to the bureaucracy of uh, the North Pacific. <laughs> Just slow down again. That's the sound you know. I have. Just slow down oh. just now. <laughs> it's like oh the central person to doing these checks is now not around what are we going to do <laughs> now the question um, is what would the next speaker do <laughs> <laughs> how can they be as fast but uh like at the same time like credit to Sawale is too who is very often faster than me on citizenship checks uh, you know, as as admin and speaker, I often like won't be as fast at getting to that. Not to say that Sawali doesn't have an important job. <clears throat> uh, no offense, Sawali, <laughs> but uh, you know, he has definitely been even faster than me in, in his vice delegate checks, which is which is only which only helps make it even faster because if they already pass the vice delegate check, then I can approve, then the speaker or me can, I can approve their, I can approve their application immediately if they already pass the vice delegate check. So that, that's even more streamlined than that's, that's while he's faster than me. Uh, and you know, I think, it's kind of funny because I was because I had a thought recently that this this may have made people have too high of standards for how quickly the bureaucracy churns in in the North Pacific, because there was actually uh, in a recent foreign affairs applicant uh, who hadn't been assigned to an embassy within a day. Now, normally, if he now when he applied for citizenship, he got it within a day because like that's just what happens when you apply for citizenship nowadays but he didn't get an embassy within a day so he just kind of left and it's like well do we ha are we setting too high of standards now <laughs> is it too fast for our own good <laughs> it's like we're t the, like we're we're creating this illusion of an efficient bureaucracy and that's not what the north pacific is <laughs> never was and it never will be <laughs> I mean, all the better for people to join the forums and get started immediately checking everything out with their new citizenship mask. But <laughs> if it if it's that's too high of standards, maybe I should ask Savali to slow down a little bit. <laughs> I mean, he's a sloth. I'm sure. I'm sure he's perfectly capable of doing that. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, I feel like just the speed of it makes we get um, the speed of it has the speed of it makes it that we get more members. But I don't know if that makes makes sense that they are retained. I feel like they just come and then eventually they leave. Like if they don't find anything, <laughs> they get citizenship. Check out the form if they find anything good or interested for them. They'll just join it, and then if they're not, I feel like they just leave the form forever. <laughs> Well, maybe uh, Home Affairs uh, needs to improve their bureaucracy next. Hmm? Hey, Brendog? I might have to now. Have to be quick. I'm putting the pressure on you, Brendog. Come on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God, Tomb. I mean, all, all praise to Tomb for being such an effective Home Affairs minister. Like, he is the single most effective Home Affairs minister I have ever ever seen in the north pacific but you know i after seeing just i i don't want i personally just don't want to see him back in that office now because he always he always uses it in preparation for some other goal of his he always has some some other motive and you know it'd be great if it was like you know, because oftentimes people will become more active in home affairs in order to, uh, before a delicacy run, because that helps you get more known to the newer people in the region. And if you're already and if you're already known to the older people in the region, then you're pretty much set for the, for a delicacy run. And you know, I'm I'm pretty sure Toom would be an effective delegate if he didn't get bogged down with all the crisis crises. <laughs> The crises and the shady back dealings. Just okay. Yeah, moving on from that. On that, on the... that lovely note. Talk about the parties in town. <laughs> uh yeah, political parties. Uh, you know, I think political parties could definitely be a successful thing in TNP. Uh, but at the but at the same time, people don't really have some nebulous like central tenant that they really hold hold themselves to when it comes to political like how they vote politically in the north pacific like there's no there's not really any conservative or liberal side to the north pacific if you know what i mean so it's like there's no central tenant that people could really hold themselves to with how they vote in the north pacific beyond like this like the community or like uh or d democracy or our laws like we are like pretty much most of us already have that whole what what we like and what and what we hold dear with with our politics and tnp so i'm not sure if there's any like nebulous core tenant that isn't held by the vast majority of people in tnp that you could really form a political party around Form political parties and elections is that like usually political parties influence the elections? But the fact in TMP is that we elect people based on their merit and not based on their views. So it's hard for the integration of political parties into elections just because it just doesn't mix together in TMP. Yeah. And I mean, like, the most successful political party in TMP is the Regressive Party. And you know they're all great fun. Uh, all praise be to Maul the Shark, but I, you know, it would be nice if we had like real serious political parties. Uh, I just worry that if we do, we'll have to reform our election systems to not use first past the post, because otherwise we'll inevitably get to fractured political parties, and those are never fun. So I, I can, they might work if things change via elections, but at this current stage, I really don't think they'll work. How, how the system currently works? Nope, they won't. It's nice to have them. It's just a fun side to kind of politics, yeah. and then like I think it would, I think it would be like another side of the TNP of TNP's politics if we have some sort of at least semi-organized political party 
and like it would give it would give something for people to like kind of rally around in a bit and like have a little have their own little sub community in, uh, in the political system of the North Pacific. And I think it would be I think it would be fun, you know, like I'm sh- I'm sure regressive party people are having lots of fun because it's their because it's the regressive party. And I I'm pretty sure Maul's laughing, uh, laughing a lot to himself from <laughs> from this recent uh, fun times in the uh, court of TNP. <laughs> It's closing. Um, it's closing to nearly four months since the first request for we nearly four months. Yeah, uh, I still haven't. Far be it from me to uh, go against the court, but I'm still I've still been declared incapable of counting uh, by the court. So, you know, far be it from me to question the court's decision to question my mathematical abilities. Like it's been so long that I'm kind of wondering what will happen with this new judicial election because knowing the recent R4Rs, there will still be ongoing when we get a new court. And it will be like, who will actually do the r 4 <laughs> So it's like, what will happen now? <laughs> yeah. The judicial note, since we're there... Um... Yeah, Who do you th- elections coming up? I assume most of the justices will probably renominate themselves, declare their candidacy or whatever. I'm pretty sure they'll all be nominated like immediately. Um, but who else comes to mind apart from the? Anyone that could do it on the court? Because I just don't know. You don't know anyone on the current current court? No, I don't know anyone who would do well on the court. I know everyone. I feel like there's a few people that might do well on the court, but I don't. I mean, there's there's obviously the current court, uh, Scorch, uh, Bootsy, and Zyvetskistan. I feel like I haven't seen them just because they're just like we're waiting. They're just waiting for the request for me. You take Sil Dorset on the court. Uh, you t- Sil is not confident in his abilities in law, and I'm not sure why because. A background in uh, role play and a background in world assembly affairs is probably the best experience you can get without actually having involved, actually being involved in the legal system in TNP. That's probably the best experience you can get outside of that. So if he if he does decide to go into law, I'm pretty sure he'd do well. But he he's just not confident in his in his ability right now. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping this will give him some first party experience and maybe he'll decide to join in now. See, just just nominate him. <laughs> see what see accepts it or not. I mean, just nominate right. everybody. That's that happens every time. Oh yes, I forgot about that. <laughs> like, come on, if if Yal Khan Yal Khan can become a justice, then you can too. Come on. Saying Zyvet's not experienced enough. Is that what you're saying? Oh, we... Case just poked us. Uh, do you believe TNP's judicial system and the courts are effective? And it's like, I'm not sure we can discuss that in any sort of timely manner. I know. Because it's just like, hmm, are they effective? Kind of? And then it's like, <laughs> I mean, four months waiting? We very obviously need to bring all of our complaints to the FIC, okay? Like, that's that's where that's where the real future lies with the FIC. For those who don't know, the FIC is uh, uh, our Lord our Lord Flemingovia's alternative to the to TNP's courts that uses a system of arbitration instead. 
you can actually find it in the Agora under Temple Courts, I believe. And while you're there, go ahead and look up the uh, Book of Flamingovia because it is a, it is a great read. Do you mean? Uh, especially with the current legal clusterfuck in the courts right now. <laughs> the courts will somehow sort themselves out. <laughs> um, and eventually, it will actually just clear out. Probably in another, like, four months, let's say. <laughs> Oh man, uh, if they t- like turn over, if they turn over that R for R and then like leave the question open and then it finally goes like, oh yeah, okay, it we d- we decided against Lord Ravenclaw, it passes. They, we, you know, just uh. <laughs> no, this is what this will happen it's, by like November. Let's be honest. It's it's been so long that I almost forgot Lord Ravenclaw filed the initial request for review <laughs> because there's been so many of them so far. Just the fourth one? Yeah, just the fourth one. Yeah, but like, just uh, it's been going on so long at it's Pele by now point said like, we just want this over with and this is what everybody is thinking. <laughs> by now, he's just like can the play please leave? Uh, we get a play the court. Just went this day. <laughs> uh, yeah, the courts are all sorts of fun. You should definitely run for just if you're if you're interested in joining that. If you want to be played by request for reviews mainly. Yeah. I actually at one point said in the uh, uh, World Assembly Affairs, we were discussing, uh, in the World Assembly Affairs channel, we were actually discussing the R for, uh, the court situation. We were actually discussing the court situation, to which I said, uh, it's, and it's actually pinned, and I swear, if you do some request for review with a court and all six recent temporary hearing officers have to recuse themselves, I will hang you off the court ceiling in a noose. <laughs> because it's already... <laughs> it's already... Like, we're out of... Like, if it comes down to it, I, I'm pretty sure I could find three more people like I have three more people that could be temporary hearing officers but it's like no don't do this to me don't do this to Gladio we've had enough <laughs> don't do this to citizens of TMP everyone has enough <laughs> one wants this to continue I mean, if you could I would just like stop it and so all the requests for reviews. Oh man. Yeah, the courts are all sorts of fun. Uh and on that note, I uh I believe we ran out of topics on the list. Yeah, yes. it looks like it. Yeah, it's sad. But we can we can feel free to hang out this. We could feel free to hang out on the plaza of EC after this, but for now, this has been uh, well, first, if anyone has any questions beyond uh, verbal shit posting time, thank you, Malfi. If anyone has any questions for us beyond that, feel free to ask. Actually, Yogan's not on, so we can't do that. Where's Yogan? Uh, well, Yogan just kind of hasn't been showing up for NBA lately. I. I feel like he's been too obsessed with uh, non-NS stuff like uh, me. Me. Anyway. Uh, How fluffy is the fluff? Extremely fluffy. But how fluffy is that? Extremely fluffy. Just fluff. Like, come on. Actually, hold on. Let's see.
<laughs> Dear Yolkin's pl- platonic fluffy life partner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. <laughs> so fluffy it is, apparently. Is there any questions with regard to the Northern Broadcasting Service or with regards to the North Pacific? <laughs> we can't all be obsessing over the fluff 24-7 now. Fortunately, we can't. Make me not obsess over the fluff 24 7. Uh, well, that's something that you'll have to explore, Malfi. That's that's something you'll have to look look into yourself. Excuse me, but your your nickname clearly has. It's clearly spelled M A L F I E. That's Malfi, okay? It is Malfi. I have to confirm. Like if you if it was just Malf. <laughs> okay, now now you're now you're especially Malfi. <laughs> you are Malfi now and forever. <laughs> you have indeed doomed yourself. Uh, why are there so many dragons? It's because I have such a magnetic personality and also fluff. No, it's just many, fluff. When I need to, I can draw many people to my cause, except for uh, except for those uh, stubborn people. George. Actually, George St. George was a dragon at one point. He actually had a Mushu as his avatar for a while. What about Fluff, Georgie? I mean... Mushu is definitely a great dragon, but what about Fluff? Have to have the Fluff. Otherwise, I don't accept you as a dragon. You know what? Hold on. Just gotta. Just gotta dab on the haters. In before I'm banned from St. George. <laughs> are there are there yet any questions about regarding the North Pacific or the Northern Broadcasting Service <laughs> or about Cache? I'm sh- I'm sure Cache is a very interesting subject to discuss. It's always coup time. It's always you can't. There's no there's no such thing as no coup time. So. It's always a time. Thoughts on cooing the government? I mean, you're the Minister of Defense, Malfi. Uh, you're you're in the best position to figure this stuff out. Become the Minister of Offense instead. Minister of Offensive Insults. Offense intended. Uh, yeah, Malfi, Malfi's uh, complaint, uh, claiming that he's just so nice. Uh, so he's got the uh, fake news down for the coups. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so it's 2 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and end.
end the broadcast now. Uh, this has been the Northern Broadcasting Service. I've been Darkania. And I've been Brendog. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a good one.